Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel and my small piece of paradise here in Portugal. So I live here with my lovely girlfriend Victoria and my handsome dog Teddy. I would love for Ted to come and jump in the shot right now and say hello but to be honest it's the middle of summer here in Portugal and it's 12 o'clock and it's 37 degrees already so it's too hot for him to be outside he's got a thick undercoat he's indoors with a fan on his face keeping him cool we're taking care of him in this hot weather I thought I'd use this first video to introduce myself tell you a bit about how we ended up in Portugal and also what you can expect from the channel in the future Our journey started about three, maybe four years ago, um, when Victoria and I decided that we wanted to leave behind the rat race of the UK and we wanted to move abroad. We wanted to go somewhere that firstly had a warmer climate, that secondly was less densely populated than the UK, and thirdly somewhere where we could have some land to work on lots of projects. We also wanted a place with plenty of privacy surrounded by nature and nothing but peace and quiet. After lots of research into different countries, weighing up the pros and the cons, we chose Portugal. I'll go into detail in another video as to why we settled on Portugal, because there's lots to cover in that. But in short, it's just because it ticked almost all of the boxes that we were looking for. Now, our initial plan was to come here in 2021. So we decided to put our house on the market back in the UK as a way of kind of giving us a kick up the backside and turning this thing into reality rather than it just being a pipe dream. We actually accepted an offer from our neighbor before the property even went on the market, which was incredible. It got the ball rolling really quickly and we expected to complete within a couple of months. You must stay at home. So unfortunately COVID hit everywhere and the UK went into lockdown. At this point, the sale was near completion, um, but we had to put it on hold because Victoria and I couldn't find anywhere else to stay temporarily between selling our house and going to Portugal. Airbnbs, weren't allowing people to make any bookings and letting agents weren't open to do any viewings. So we were kind of left in limbo. The UK lockdown ended just before the summer, but there was so much uncertainty at that time around everything, particularly travel. So Victoria and I thought it would be sensible if we could find a rental for the medium term that we could stay in for maybe a year, a bit longer, whilst we just see how this COVID situation panned out. So our house sale completed, we moved into a rental and we spent that summer planning our trip to Portugal the following year. Unfortunately, a few months later, I lost my job. The company I was working for halted all new projects that we were working on in response to uncertainty in their sector because of COVID. But with the job market being so dire in the UK at that moment, I felt I only really had two choices. The first being spend months on end looking for a job that I didn't want. It was going to be temporary until we left the country. Option two was to throw caution to the wind, bring our adventure to Portugal forward and just go for it. And when we were weighing it up, job, Portugal, you know, I chose Portugal very easily. Within a month of making that decision, we had managed to get out of our rental agreement. We had sold the majority of our possessions and we were ready to leave and go to Portugal. And to say that month was stressful was an understatement. I already had a Citroen Berlingo van, so I decided to build a doggy cabin in the back behind our seats so Ted could have his own space in a comfy bed because the journey's about 17 hours to Portugal. And by doing that, it meant I could build a shelf above him to put stuff 
Uh, he could be enclosed so we could pack stuff from floor to ceiling in the back of the van without having to worry about things toppling on him. It was a super rushed project doing that, but I was pleasantly surprised. It turned out really well and Ted absolutely loves it. Once the doggy cabin was built, we booked our ticket on the Euro tunnel and we packed the van with, let's say, all of our essential belongings. I say essential because realistically we've probably not touched about 40 to 50% of what we bought at that time. Don't ask me why we decided on some of the things, but it felt like it was right at the time. With the van packed, we said a goodbye to our family and friends. We didn't know when we were gonna see them next, so saying goodbye was sad, but we were also excited and we got on the road and cracked on with our adventure. We took the Euro Tunnel and we drove through France and Spain over a period of three days, staying in Airbnbs along the way. And yeah, we then spent six weeks traveling around Portugal, mostly central Portugal with some southern Portugal, getting a feel for areas and trying to think of where we might want to settle. Unfortunately, after our six weeks of traveling, COVID restrictions hit again and we couldn't travel around the country freely anymore. So we had to try and find somewhere that we could treat as a base over winter, maybe four or five months, maybe a bit longer. And it was actually a blessing in disguise because we found this incredible winter let in the Algarve, this amazing villa that's normally for rental in the summer at peak prices, but in the winter because it's empty and because of COVID, we got a great deal. We had a swimming pool, lots of space, a hectare of land for Ted to go and have walks on a run around, which is amazing in COVID because it was so restricted on your movements. And we had the most amazing landlords who we still speak to now, lovely Swedish couple. And it made us realize that we actually love it in the South. And I think in the future, that's where we would want to be. But unfortunately at this moment in time, it's too expensive for us. Hopefully one day. One quick thing, so I forgot to say, I will talk about our time in the Algarve as well as the rest of our time traveling around Portugal and the places we went to in another video because it's a lot to cover. Now, during this time in the Algarve, we decided that we loved Portugal and that we wanted to stay. So we decided to make it official and we became residents. We were really lucky that because we bought the trip forward, we were actually in the country already before the end of the Brexit transition period. So we managed to get residency very, very easily. It was just a quick 10 minute appointment at our local council, sign some paperwork and that's it. We became residents. Whereas now you have to apply for a visa and there's a lot more criteria. So after six months in the Algarve, the Portuguese government lifted travel restrictions again within Portugal, which now meant you could move between municipalities, which is kind of like counties in the UK. And we decided to seize the opportunity. We traveled back up to central Portugal. And we stayed here for a week um, in a few areas that we had been to previously. And we saw property after property after property somewhere in the ballpark of 30 to 40 properties within the space of a week it was crazy and to be honest there was more duds than there was good ones but eventually we came to this one here and we could see it was a real diamond in the rough it was one of the last ones we actually viewed we then stayed an extra day longer than we had planned to up here just so we could go back and have a second viewing with a clear head which yeah i would advise to anybody who's looking at property whether it's land or a house after the second viewing, we went back to the Algarve, we had a little think and we decided, yep, we're gonna put an offer in on this place. There was a bit of back and forth, but eventually our offer was accepted and we were over the moon. So about six weeks later, everything went through. We came back up from the Algarve to central Portugal to go to the notary's office, sign all of the documents and we got the keys. So our property is just under three acres, roughly around 1.2 hectares, which is very big and plenty big enough for us. So the property is currently off grid. The main house is hundreds of years old. 
so it has no mains electricity and no running water. We installed a solar system that's big enough to power a fridge, laptops, lights, power tools, normal things that you would have in a normal household. We have two wells and we also collect rainwater from the roof which runs into a big 30,000 litre tank. That 30,000 litre tank water we treat for washing up and for bathing but we don't drink that water. Our plan in the next 12 months is to get on the grid for both electric and water but we will still use our water resources on the land as well as the solar to complement the mains electric. Our main reason for this is that we want to be able to have air conditioning. Running that from solar requires a huge system and masses of investment and with the big fire risk here although we have lots of water at the land it's still a finite amount so having mains water from the municipal from the council will be really reassuring. So, what can you expect from my channel and my videos going forward? Uh, to be honest, probably a lot less talking than there's been in this one. Obviously, I had to talk a lot to give you an introduction, but in future, it will definitely be less talking, more doing. There are plenty of projects to come here on our property, from clearing the land, to converting the big water tank to a pool, building a wooden cabin slash tiny home, and then eventually, renovating the main house and bear with me as I try to improve my filmmaking skills along the way. So thanks for joining me as I took you around our property and I told you my story. I really hope you found it interesting. I'm a bit unsure whether anybody will find uh, what we do here on our farm interesting so if you're still here and you enjoyed the video and you want to hear more please leave a comment introduce yourself and say hi because it would be great to hear from you I hope you can join me for my next video where I will show you a project that I've been working on for a little while due to some unexpected delays which I will cover thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you on the next video